our young people are looking for answers and they're looking for hope. And uh, if they can look back and see the strength of our ancestors, then I think they'll find that hope and hopefully they'll make a difference. That strength and that hope tested at the old courthouse in downtown St. Louis more than a century ago. A million dollar renovation is now underway there and stories like that of Dred and Harriet Scott and their 11 year fight for freedom will be highlighted there. Taylor Holt shares one woman's very special bond with this piece of history and her call to action. But this is a replica of the statue that we actually, you won't believe it, I love this. You, this is 3D printed. A portal back in time. That's Thomas Jefferson, uh, Peter Blow, Dred Scott, Tawny, and Jefferson Davis. The many names playing a role in Dred Scott's story. His legacy lives on through the Dred Scott Heritage Foundation in Chesterfield Mall. There are over 50 books that show the history of Dred Scott here. We have their um, quick claim deed, which is what was required for them to get their freedom. We have their freedom bond, we have their death records. But Lynn Jackson shares family ties with Dred Scott as well. She's his great, great granddaughter. We always grew up knowing that we were relatives of Dred Scott and uh, it was something that family was proud of. Jackson is the oldest of four siblings and years ago she made it her mission to learn more about her ancestor. I decided to obey a voice that I heard that told me to study Dred Scott in 1995. She learned Dred's story started in Virginia in 1799. Born into the Peter Blow family, his original master, who eventually ended up in St. Louis and sold him to an army surgeon. They eventually went to Fort Snelling in Minnesota, where Dred met and married Harriet Robinson. They returned to St. Louis together. Their owner died and they wanted their freedom, which they actually had because of once free, always free. But the widow would not give them their freedom, and Mrs. Emerson said no on all counts. So uh, they had no choice but to sue for their freedom. From there, the 11 year legal fight started at the old courthouse downtown on April 6, 1846. Then on March 6, 1857, the United States Supreme Court ruled the Scots weren't American citizens. Therefore, they had no right to sue for their freedom in federal court. But they were so brave and courageous to go forward on a federal level. It was a catalyst for the Civil War, which essentially, having been won, broke the back of slavery. Dredd and Harriet remained enslaved until 1857 when they were freed by their enslavers. A year later, Dredd died in 1858. Fast forward to 2021, Missouri lawmakers reversed the decision declaring the Scots were still slaves. Wow. It kind of gets a little emotional. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, we we were we were privileged to be a part of this. That's all I can say about that right now. The renunciation was a big deal. Jackson calls it a privilege to carry on Scott's legacy through the foundation. I really, really wanted to do three things: commemorate, educate, and have reconciliation. We have the Dred Scott present sons and daughters of reconciliation. That's been a big program, a signature program where descendants of other famous people and I come together and we share our collective stories and how they overlap. The goal is to find a permanent location outside Chesterfield Mall. Also in the works, building a new Dred Scott monument at Calvary Cemetery in North St. Louis, where he's buried today. Jackson imagines her ancestor would be proud of the progress African Americans have made, but there's still more work to be done. I think that they would, if they were to see the whole picture, would still see the loom of racism that hangs over us, but at the same time, they would say, keep going. That's one of the main things she's taken from their years long fight to live freely. Their story was one of a family trying to get their freedom. They didn't start out trying to save the world or impact the nation. Dredd and Harriet were just two of 333 slaves between 1814 and 1860 who sued for their freedom. Their plight now memorialized in downtown St. Louis. We now have a Freedom Suits Memorial downtown, and uh, it's at the plaza of the Circuit Court building. It commemorates those people and actually celebrates the people. And Jackson hopes others follow her path, carrying on the legacy of their ancestors. We need to look into our backgrounds, look into our histories, find out what your ancestors did, and see what you can do to build on that. Taylor Holt, News 4.
All this month, News 4 will be highlighting St. Louis's Black History. You can watch these stories after they air on News 4 at 5 by visiting the Black History tab. It's inside the KMOV News app. We've also got that on KMOV.com.